is the last day of Shavuot. We've talked about that. One of the things that um, Shavuot was, it was a harvest festival, okay? And because it was a harvest festival, the men of Israel were required to come into Jerusalem and bring their first fruits. <coughs> and we'll be talking about that more in the, in the sermon, but... Uh, they would bring their, their first fruits of their, the beginning of their summer harvest. Okay, this is when the wheat harvest was, uh, was coming in. Okay, the, the first fruits that we talk about at Passover are the, um, that's the, uh, the barley harvest, okay? And so 50 days later, then the wheat has ripened to the point that they were bringing in the, the wheat and we were in Israel at one point uh, where it was actually, <clears throat> they were harvesting the wheat crops right then. And they had those old John Deere combines going out there uh, harvesting the wheat. And it felt just like, <clears throat> that looks kind of like Texas right there. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> so it was, uh, it was great to see those, uh, those old uh, John Deere's go running through there and uh, um, it was really good. But one of the things that they did, they brought in the, the first fruits. What is the first fruits? That is the very best of their crops. Now, any of you that are, are gardeners or um, if you were raised on a farm like I was, um, you know that when, the, when your, your plants first ripen, the fruit, the, the vegetables, the, the uh, produce that you get from that first bit of, of um, harvest is really the best you're going to get, okay? Right now, I'm getting a few peppers in my, in my garden, and, uh, uh, you know, I've got some uh, uh, bell peppers that are about that long and about that big around, and uh, uh, the zucchini is coming in, and, and, uh, and, and then I've got these, these hot peppers that I don't know what they're called, just called big chilies. And they're about that long, and and uh, they're uh, they're pretty good, uh, <clears throat> and so uh, they're not like a jalapeno hot, but uh, it's uh, you know it's kind of it's kind of nice and and warm, and it has it has a it has a spicy finish, as we would say, okay, a warm finish. But uh, <clears throat> so you better have your glass of water with it when you when you have it. But uh, that's going to be the best that you get, okay. After that, it's all good, you know, really good stuff uh, because I'm looking forward to uh, those big old trombone sino squashes coming in and uh, my tomatoes. I've got a few tomatoes already, and all throughout the winter time, of course, we've been harvesting other things that that were uh, coming due then. But uh, that spring harvest, that summer harvest, uh, you would bring in the very best wheat and they were not to, to um, <clears throat> they were not to um, uh, eat that day until they actually came to the temple with their loaves of bread now in today's world we have these okay now that's challah okay and uh, they didn't have challah back then the braiding that we do today is more of a modern invention you know it, it's not the same but they would bring in these loaves that they baked in, the, in their, in their uh, clay ovens. <clears throat> and some of these things were quite large. They said that you'd have to use five pounds of flour for each loaf. Okay? Now, <clears throat> we have done that before. Okay? Pat made some. And so I, uh, yeah, and they were big. They were twice the size well, actually, they were longer. We had to put them in the oven sideways, kind of kitty-cornered, you know, because so it would fit. And we got it. We did. Oh, she, she was able to do that. But uh, <clears throat> they were heavy. By the time I lifted up, that's 10 pounds, okay? And so, uh, but they were also, they kind of, they were so big, and they kind of wa <laughs> waved a little bit too much. The wave offering was a little bit too much, wa too wavy, okay? So we said, well, okay, we're going to cut back and just do regular holla from now on so that it doesn't 
fall over and, and so forth. So anyway, but what they would do, they would bring their first fruits and they would have the loaves. And uh, notice that their the loaves are not uh, matzah, okay? They have leaven in them. And so we'll talk about it in a minute, but the leaven also meant that it included everyone, not just Israel. So what would they do? They would take the, the loaves, and the priest would wave the loaf up like this, and then he would turn to the west, to the south, and he would wave the, the loaves three times. Then he would turn to the west, and he would wave the loaves again. And then he would turn to the north, finally, and wave them. But he wasn't done yet. Then what he would do is turn back to the east, and he would wave it to the heavens, to the earth, and then below. So now every direction was covered. And that's what the waving of the hala was for um, for Shavuot. And so, therefore, we have waved the hala at Shavuot, and I got breadcrumbs in my eye. So, uh, <laughs> anyway, Shavuot's a great, uh, great feast. And uh, I mentioned before, let's go ahead and, and uh, do the blessing. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kiddushanu B'Mitzvah Tav Itzivano Lasok Bedivrei Torah Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who sanctifies us with his commandments and commands us to engross ourselves in words of Torah. All right, now, as I mentioned before, um, as with every one of the major holidays, we deviate from the Torah schedule and have a special reading. Now, on the first day of Shavuot, we read several passages from Exodus, and that's what we did today. Second day, then you'd read from Deuteronomy, but we don't have the time to go through all of these things without staying here for hours. And so um, then throughout Shavuot is when we read special books of the, uh, uh, from the Megalot collections. And this is when Ruth gets her spotlight, okay? Ruth uh, <clears throat> got, uh, you know, we read all the way throughout Ruth, uh, the whole book, <clears throat> because Shavuot occurs during a harvest. That's when, you know, the, that's the whole story of, of Ruth. She was uh, um, meeting up with Boaz during the harvest time. Sadly, Boaz was a really mean and nasty guy. You know why? Because he was ruthless. All right. I'm sorry, I just had to say that. Shavuot is one of the three required regalim where a man is uh, expected to travel to Jerusalem for the observance during the temple periods. It marked the conclusion of the counting of the Omer. All right? And so what is Shavuot? Uh, how many of you have never celebrated Shavuot before? In anyone here? Okay, I see a few hands out there. You've never, never re actually celebrated Shavuot before. All right. So today we're going to be looking at several aspects of this feast and why it is significant. So, Shavuot is a time for both physical and spiritual harvest. In ancient Israel, agriculture was the basis of their economy, and the nation's wealth and welfare were tied to the land. God wanted Israel's approach to agricultural success to be different from that of the other nations. <clears throat> if we obeyed God and his word, there would be plenty of rain and an abundant harvest. If we disobeyed, we would find a shortfall at the harvest time. On Shavuot, the nation of Israel was expected to bring the first fruits 
of the wheat crop to God, giving the Lord the first fruits of the harvest was a way of showing him our gratitude and declaring that all of our wealth ultimately comes from him. It's right to offer the, to God the first fruits, the beginnings of, and the best of the harvest. Therefore, Shavuot teaches us to regard all of God's gifts with gratitude, returning to him in the form of the first fruits that which we received. Now, uh, during Passover, we offered to God the first fruits of the barley harvest. And uh, this was symbolic of Yeshua's resurrection. And uh, 50 days later, <clears throat> we, uh, we returned to Jerusalem to offer the first fruits of the wheat harvest. The harvest was extended from the barley to the wheat. 50 days after Yeshua rose from the dead, his first Jewish followers gathered in Jerusalem. And the Spirit that raised him from the dead was poured out on his first disciples. The Messianic community, the body of Messiah, came into being. God's harvest was extended to more of humanity. That happened on the day of Shavuot, the fulfillment, actually, of Shavuot. One name for Shavuot is Atzeret Shel Pesach. Now, <clears throat> that's uh, the completion of, of uh, Passover is what that means, okay? And the Messiah, Yeshua, died on Passover to atone for sin. Then he rose from dead to, to the, he rose from the dead to uh, overcome death. Forty days later, he ascended to heaven, and from there he sent his spirit on Shavuot to enable us to overcome sin and experience victory in our lives. The coming of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, completes the work of the Passover lamb's death on the cross the, uh, the Spirit of God indwelling in us gives us the power we need then to overcome our own tendency to live kind of like we shouldn't, okay? To, to overcome evil, and it completes the work of salvation. Though marvelous in its own right, the, uh, God knew that the death of the Passover lamb and the redemption from sin was not enough, just as the cycles of the spring uh, festivals would be Incomplete without Shavuot, the work of salvation is not complete until a man's sin and his nature has been dealt with and the power to overcome it has been granted. Therefore, Shavuot is a time when we thank God for his gracious provisions in our life, for his material provision, for his, the first fruits of the wheat harvest, for his spiritual provision the Holy Spirit, which uh, brought a rich harvest among those first Messianic Jews in Jerusalem. Now, Shavuot is a time for a union between Jews and Gentiles. The Megillah of Ruth is one of the texts that uh, is read on this holiday. Uh, Megillah Ruth is about the harvest, but also included in the message of gathering Gentiles into the commonwealth of Israel. Ruth, a Gentile, joins herself to the Jewish people. Speaking to Naomi, she said, Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Later, or Ruth marries a Jewish man by the name of Boaz, so he was no longer ruthless. And from that union, in the third generation, came David, King David. And then uh, quite a few generations later, we see that she was, a, she was an ancestor of King Yeshua. So God brought in a woman from Moab, which, you know, they were not supposed to be doing so much, but he, he made her in the lineage of Yeshua. On Shavuot, the high priest waved two loaves of, of uh, wheat bread made with leaven. This is the only offering in all of Scripture that includes leaven, okay? All the others, you, ha you cannot 
put leaven in the bread. In general, the biblical principle is that offerings had to be made without leaven because leaven usually symbolized sin. By waving the two loaves of wheat bread, like we did today, Israel's high priest was praying, Lord, thank you for extending the harvest to the wheat. We offer up to you the first fruits, the beginning, the blessed uh, is... Uh, we offer up to you the first fruits, the beginning, the best of this crop, and Lord, we ask you to bring in the rest of the harvest throughout the year. Why were two loaves waved, not just one? Those two loaves can be understood to be symbolic of the two peoples that make up the Messianic community. In Romans 11, Rav Shaul talks about the olive tree of salvation and blessing made up of the original branches, the Jewish people, then the wild olive branches. Okay, I guess we're the wild ones. You, have, you know, that uh, the Gentiles were grafted into the olive tree. It could be that the two, uh, two loaves represented the uh, original branches, the Jewish people and the, the wild branches, the Gentiles that were grafted into the olive tree. Each one is incomplete without the other. The Jewish loaf needs the Gentile loaf to be complete, and the Gentile loaf needs the Jewish branch to be complete. Shavuot is a time of empowerment. On Shavuot, we remember and thank God for Matan Torah. That's the giving of the Torah at Mount Sinai. One of God's greatest gifts to us was the Torah. It was uh, about this time that the Ten Commandments were given to the Jewish people. Torah means more than just law. It means teaching or instructions. Throughout uh, the, the Torah, God clearly communicated to us His ways, His nature, and His will for us. Today, Shavuot is a time when religious Jews will stay up late into the night studying the Torah and reading from the Psalms. Yes, in fact, um, one of my one of my friends who uh, he in fact he will be here next week uh, ministering because uh, I will be out doing another ministry myself. But he uh, actually was he's still in the yeshiva and uh, that I was in, and so they had to get together out in uh, Midland, Texas, and that's one of the things that they did. They had an all night. Uh, study of Torah, and he was supposed to deliver his portion of it at uh, 3 o'clock in the morning. So uh, I haven't told him yet, but I woke up at about 2.30, 2.45, and he was on my mind, so I prayed that he would have a successful uh, presentation and that everyone would sort of stay awake. So uh, I haven't told him yet, but uh, that was that's something that... Uh, uh, you know, observant Jews will do is stay in the in the synagogue all night long studying Torah. On Shavuot, we also remember uh, we remember Matan Ruach, which is the giving of the Spirit, the one through whom God writes His laws on our hearts, not on a table of stone. The Spirit gives us the power to live out all the uh, the full spiritual intent of the Torah. We don't dismiss the law when we have the Spirit. On the contrary, the law becomes alive to us. And uh, at the deepest level of our hearts, it becomes our desire to, desire to please God and to fulfill His commandments. Okay, um, the law by itself has uh, an inherent weakness, okay? It lacks power. Uh, lawmakers may pass laws, but that doesn't mean the people will have the desire or the ability to comply with them. We have that same thing today. The lawmakers will come in and say, we need more uh, gun control. Well, there are hundreds of laws on the books right now, that, but guess what? Criminals don't follow the law, okay? And uh, they have, you know, we have speed limits, and let's face it, Texans do not follow the speed limits. 
you know you know they got uh, they got that part there between san antonio and uh, and uh, austin and it says you know 85 miles an hour that's about the only place in the country that's 85 and i think some i saw a sign that says 85 or whatever <laughs> you know so you can have all the laws but if people won't follow them what are you going to do the rabbis determined that Shavuot was the same time when the Jewish people re received Torah at Mount Sinai. When, uh, while Moses was up on Sinai receiving the law, Israel was at the bottom of Sinai, guess what? Worshiping the golden calf and breaking the law. Moses came down from uh, Sinai, saw what was happening, and uh, called out for, Whoever is with the Lord, come with to me. And the Levites came to Moses. You know, remember, Moses was also a Levite. And uh, so they, they went with him. And then they said, go out throughout the camp. And everybody that was out there uh, celebrating and running around, uh, um, you know, worshiping this calf, kill them. That was a hard thing to do. 3,000 men were killed on Shavuot when the law was given. When the Holy Spirit was given, there were another 3,000. And they were also dead to sin. But they were alive in Yeshua. 3,000 men were, were added to the, uh, the kingdom of God that day. At the time the law was given, 3,000 men were put to death because of their actions were now de deemed illegal they were weak. The giving of the, the Torah alone did not strengthen them. But the Spirit gives us a new desire to fulfill God's Torah and the power to do so. The Spirit gives us the power to live, power to witness, power to please God, the power to have victory over the world, the, the flesh and the devil. It's hardly coincidental that on the day of Shavuot, when the Spirit was given, 3,000 men were empowered to witness to the, uh, the fact and the life of Yeshua and his resurrected life. Peter was one of those guys that, uh, you know, he was at the house of Caiaphas. He was denying Yeshua three times. In fact, he even resorted to uh, sailor talk to uh, tell the people that, no, he didn't have anything to do with, uh, with um, that guy, Yeshua. And, uh, okay, so there's, I know there's at least three sailors in this, uh, in this congregation. We know what sailor talk is, so not very nice. All right? So, uh, but it gave him the power then to go out there and preach. And um, because of that, 3,000 men were saved. Prior to the coming of Messiah, and let's see, Shavuot is a time to grow in the Spirit. Prior to coming of Messiah, the ministry of the Spirit was limited, okay? It would uh, seem uh, to have come on fewer people to a lesser extent and for a shorter duration of time. King David had to pray, do not take your Holy Spirit from me. The full indwelling of God's Spirit was not to be realized until Yeshua came. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit is the greatest gift we can receive in this life. It regenerates us when, uh, when we are spiritually dead and revives us when we're spiritually cold. It, uh, if it weren't for the work of the, the Spirit, none of us would have any spiritual life at all. And, uh, um, you know, so I've heard people say, well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to go do this or that and the other if I didn't have the Holy Spirit. And I heard one guy said, I wouldn't want to go to the mailbox if I, without the Holy Spirit. You know, so that's, that's how important it is. The Spirit also baptizes us into the body of Messiah. He joins us both to the Father and to one another. Believers in Yeshua all share the same Spirit. We have a new unity and oneness with each other. We are no longer alone we are part of an eternal community. The Spirit assures us of eternal life and that we, are, that we truly belong to God. It says, We have received a spirit of adoption as sons by which we cry out, Abba, Father. 
the Spirit himself bears witness that we are the children of God. That's in Romans eight fifteen and 16. Do you, have an, uh, uh, do you have that inner witness of the Holy Spirit that God is your Father and that you are truly one of His? That's what the Holy Spirit does for us. The Spirit of God guides our prayers. We don't know how to pray sometimes as we should, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. That's Romans 8.26. The Spirit gives gifts to every child of God. Every believer has to uh, has at least one gift from the Holy Spirit. Now, let me say that again. Every believer has at least one gift of the Holy Spirit, and you're expected to put yours to good use. Now, you have a measure of the Holy Spirit simply by the fact that you have accepted Yeshua because it says no man... Uh, comes to Yeshua except the Spirit draws him. But God gives us uh, gifts, and we're expected to put them to use. Just ask him to reveal what your gifts are and then start using them. Sometimes we don't even know what our gifts are because we're not willing to step out of our comfort zone, you know, or to get up off our tukas and go do something. And uh, so we should be going out and doing something. There's one, uh, one last thing I'd like to leave with you, with you this morning, and that is a comparison between the unleavened bread of Passover and the leavened bread of Shavuot. We all know that in the Bible, leaven is, an, uh, is analogous to sin. Paul said it only takes a small amount of leaven to affect the whole loaf. It's the same in our lives. Just a small amount of sin that is allowed to grow will ev- eventually affect our entire being. So, if leaven is such a bad thing, why was it specified for Shavuot? Because that was the time God blessed his people with the Torah, and then he blessed all of mankind with the Holy Spirit. The leaven shows us that God does not use perfect people. It's a good thing, eh? Yeah. He, uh, he uses imperfect people. Even the people in the Bible, you look at the people in the Bible, you're not going to find a single one of them that was uh, perfect. Well, there was, but they crucified him. But you look at the families in the Bible. You talk about dysfunctional. The families in the Bible, I mean, the patriarchs, those guys, they had, well, anytime you have more than one wife, you're going to have trouble. And so... Uh, you know, and they, they were totally, you know, dysfunctional. So if God can use them and use all of that, then you know what? He can use us. He can use you. Uh, and everybody here that says, no, I just don't have any, I, I can't do that or this. Well, yes, you can. If you just get up and do it, you just got to tr- get out of your comfort zone and say to God, okay, I am going to do this for you. And guess what? You will be, uh, you'll be empowered. That's what the Holy Spirit does. And uh, God uses imperfect people all the time. That's all He uses is imperfect people. And uh, so, because if uh, you know, that's just that's who we are. So don't wait to come to the Lord. Don't wait to say I'm going to do something for the Lord until you're good enough. Okay. Because we're never going to be good enough, all right? Um, And come as you are. And today is the day of salvation. I don't know everybody that's here. There are some folks here maybe that are are visitors. But that uh, if you have not accepted Yeshua as your personal Savior, today is the day to do that. You don't know. You might walk outside and be hit by an asteroid or an astrovan or something, you know? Could happen. You know, and so you you definitely need Yeshua in your life. You need the Holy Spirit in your life. By assembly, shalom. The Lord.
Lord bless and keep you. The Lord shine the light of his face on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance on you and give you his peace, his shalom, his completeness. Amen. Amen. Okay, we will have Torah Club right, uh, right afterwards. And um, Hebrew, I think, uh, yes. Yeah.